Daniel Day Kim and I decided that we needed to take action as leaders of our community to make a statement that we're not going to take this anymore and that we need to take action and rise up for this. Across the country, there's a rise in hate crimes targeting Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. In San Francisco, a 19-year-old is facing murder charges after he pushed an 84-year-old Thai man to the ground so hard the victim hit his head on the pavement and died. In Oakland's Chinatown, surveillance cameras caught a 91-year-old man being violently shoved to the ground on New Year's Eve. Police believe the attacker then targeted a 60-year-old man and a 55-year-old woman in the Chinatown area as well. All three victims are thankfully okay. No one has been formally charged in the case, but last night, Oakland police said they do have a person of interest in custody on unrelated charges. To help bring the attacker to justice, actors Daniel Day Kim and Daniel Wu teamed up to offer a $25,000 reward. These attacks, part of a larger pattern, reporting from the UN last year shows that over an eight-week period from March to May, there were 1,800 incidents targeting Asian Americans in the United States. With me now, the actors calling for justice, Daniel Day Kim and Daniel Wu. Also with me, Amanda Wynn. She's a 2019 Nobel Peace Prize nominee and the CEO and founder of Rise. Daniel Wu, please tell us more about the reward that you and the other Daniel posted on social media and what you want people to understand about the seriousness of this incident. Yeah, we put up the reward because we didn't see enough action coming from the the authorities to try and thwart these crimes that have been happening uh, increasingly since the rise of COVID. And so we decided that Daniel and I, Daniel Day Kim and I decided that we needed to take action as leaders of our community to make a statement that we're not going to take this anymore and that we need to take action and rise up for this. Daniel Day Kim, attacks against Asians have been happening for months now. You laid some of that out. Amanda laid some of that out. Of course, there's also incredible diversity within the Asian American community, diversity of country of origin, of language, of immigration status. What then are the conversations that are happening inside of Asian and Asian American communities about what you're watching happen? It's a great question. Uh, you know, what's interesting is that we are not monolithic as Asian Americans. At the same time, th those who are attacking us really don't see that either. They, they attack mm -hmm. us because we mm -hmm. look vaguely Asian. And so the conversations we've been having amongst ourselves are to focus on uniting all of us. You know, if we are being seen as somehow uh, easy targets, then we need to come together and figure out the solutions together, along with the media, along with our legislators, along with our district attorneys. It needs to be a comprehensive uh, solution to this problem, along with um, our, our, our leaders in the African-American community and, and, and the white community. It needs to be everyone. Danu, I take Amanda's point to heart about the pain that comes with that invisibility and the need for all of us to do better. What does doing better look like, Daniel? Well, I think it starts with empathy for the situation um, and understanding that we are a community that's under attack um, and recognizing that, that that's the first step. And then from there, taking steps to help for what's happening to our community. We're being attacked on all sides by all types of people. And so we need to stop that as, as soon as possible. We, the, but the first thing is to make sure that everyone recognizes that that is happening. I know that there's been so much in the news these days, so much craziness going on, and it's hard to see all of that. But we are crying out for help, and we are crying out for people to lend a hand to help us with our plight. 